Silvana, let's uh, begin at the beginning. Um, the situation which you report on in your film, the street protests in Madrid, is something which is not only specific for Madrid. Uh, it happened in many European cities, it happened also in Slovenia, for example. But the prevailing reaction to these happenings was usually either cynical, for example, in Slovenia, I was telling you about this before, there was a response which says that, ah, zombies are revolting, or sometimes these um, street protests and activities were ignored, sometimes the system would be afraid of them, like in Greece, but you very bluntly recognize this as, like you say in the title of the film, the class struggle and the revolution. Um, so, if you could talk a little bit about this. Yeah. Uh, as I said at the beginning, when the, you know, the, the, the event in Spain happened just after the, uh, what we called in Europe the Arabic Spring, you know, and uh, so I go on the place and uh, I try to understand what happened. And uh, it was, uh, for me, very, very clear that uh, it wasn't a little demonstration or something like that, but something more deep. Uh, you can find on the, in, uh, uh, I arrive on the place perhaps one, ten days after the beginning, and in the middle of, uh, uh, sorry, uh, on the place Puerta del Sol, so in the middle of Spain, in the center of uh, Madrid, so the center of Spain, uh, they built a camp, you know, they built a camp and it, it, it was another society with, in only two weeks, you can find different commission, you can, uh, when you arrive, you can see uh, a place with a lot of uh, slogans uh, on paper, uh, camp, uh, commission, restaurant, uh, library, uh, different things like that. A lot of people spoke about politics on the place at uh, each time of the day, you know, uh, in the streets around the place. Uh, when the night is coming, you can have, you can find, uh, sorry, uh, at the end of the afternoon, you have an assembly in the uh, on the place, when the night is coming, you have a big assembly with uh, thousands and thousands of people. When it's at the end of the weeks, the Fridays, for example, you have uh, at this time the very, very big assembly with 10,000 people who try to speak about politics, and I never did see some, so, something like that before. So it was very strong and powerful. And when I start to understand what's happened very clearly, I think I, I, uh, before I read some text, um, uh, because two weeks after the beginning of the process, you can, in France, for example, I can find some article about the, the process from um, people in university. And, and I read that uh, they, they wrote that uh, the people on the place was the people of the middle class, uh, the bobo, something like that. You know. But when I was on the place, it's not really like that. You can find some very uh, mixed people from different class, uh, social class, you know, some people from the low, low classes, proletarian, some of them too, um, until the, the middle or the little bourgeoisie, middle class or little bourgeoisie, you know. So the spectrum was very large like that. You can find, of course, some undocumented people, some, some group of undocumented people, special commission. And when I start to spoke with the, to her, sorry, the, the, the degradation or the, the, the expression of the people, and, uh, and after I start to speak with them, I, s I, I think that I understand and I, that it's uh, uh, the, the, the common point of all these people was the silence. You know, you have a lot of people who knew when they, was, they were young the dictature of Franco and stay in silence under the dictature. And after, when the dictator is failed, they stay in silence after the, the dictature, you know, so they didn't succeed to express themselves very deeply, you know, about uh, uh, their life and how they feel about uh, the political systems, you know. So they, they spent from a system to another one. And you have, of course, the young generation, you know, they knew uh, only the post-Frankism and the ultra-liberalism, but all the representation of themselves, of these people, are totally destroyed, you know. Some people, you know, now in the ideology of the, of the ultra liberalism, if you don't succeed uh, as a, in your social professional life, you know, 
uh, it's not because of the system, it's because, this, it's because uh, yourself, you're not good or something like that, you know. Uh, in the ideology of uh, ultraliberalism, uh, people who haven't a job, and unemployed people, is uh, not people who haven't a job, is the people uh, who are uh, not the capacity to, to have a, uh, a job, you know. It's the ideology uh, uh, of the ultraliberalism like that we build a kind of uh, capability. And so, in this, uh, for the first time, perhaps in uh, Occident, in the, the, in the 21th century, it was a, um, a process of different people from different generations who try to uh, go on the, on the who go, um, sorry, who's uh, uh, gone on the place, on the street, to try to speak about uh, how they receive uh, the policies uh, of, their, of the country, uh, uh, and try to express themselves. They don't, for a lot of people, they don't know what uh, they want, really, how they can build the system. But they say, this system actually is not possible. Uh, and we have to think about the process and the society that we would like to, to build. And they try to do that, not only in speech, of course, we have a lot of speech, uh, but in the same time, they try to experiment some new kind of, and some new form of life, you know, in this camp. So for me, the, the, the camp in Puerta del Sol is really like, uh, to use the concept of Foucault, for example, a erotopic place, you know. Uh, it's a place where you can uh, mix the utopia and, uh, and the present and with the fact to be on the place and try to speak about politics, for me, they are uh, asking about some uh, concept uh, which are an, uh, at the basement of how civilization, you know, since the Greek, it's the concept of logos, the, the, the verb, you know, logos, uh, demos, uh, uh, revolution, uh, uh, how we can build uh, uh, a common life different than uh, uh, the order of the society right now. And for me, it's, uh, it's very uh, re um, actualized in, this, uh, in a certain sense. Uh, the concept of re revolution and class struggle is not... Uh, but it will be a, a mistake to have a reading of this process with uh, the, uh, the, uh, the glass of the 20th century, you know, with a, a Marxist lecture or something like that. It's not the same, con it's not the concept of revolution as the big, even as the big evening, you know, or we have the revolution start, we take the power, and now it's something like the happiness on the earth. It's really the, the revolution as a process. We have to, and you have to ask some question, try to find some answer, uh, and it's why, for me, it's not a movement, but a process, you know in short, middle, and, uh, and long term. So a lot of people are very uh, disappointed <coughs> by uh, this process. They say, yeah, a lot of people was in the street at the beginning, now less and less. But it's, uh, I think it's more interesting to understand that it's a process in time. And I think that the events uh, which happen in Spain are very uh, important for that. A uh, lot of young people make their first step of uh, the first political step with this process. Uh, and in the same time, of course, uh, the false relationship between this process and the power is very unequal. Uh, and uh, you remember that uh, Madrid is the beginning of the movement of Occupy, you know, all over the world. So it's really dangerous, and all the state knew that. It's why they uh, they vote and make some new laws, for example, in Spain one year later, in 2012, someone who called for a demonstration in the street by internet can have and receive two years or four years of uh, jail. Uh, someone who make, uh, during the demonstration, a passive resistance against the police can have two years of, uh, of jail. So the power and all the government, because all the government in all over the world uh, vote especially this kind of uh, laws, you know, to try to uh, empêche, to stop uh, the meeting, the, the, the demonstration like that. All the power know that the, the, this process deeply is very important, historical and dangerous for them. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> what you are saying now is um, uh, very, very interesting because um, it's apparent 
that you have a very strong opinion as you enter a certain situation. You come with your background, as a, like I said before, as a political thinker, and you are able very quickly to interpret things. But on the other hand, you still always spend a lot of time in a place where you make your film. Uh, also in your other films, I mean, when you want to make a film about the situation in Calais, you go there, you spend not only days, but weeks, months there. Three years. You apparently, three years, you apparently stayed in Madrid for a long time. So I'm wondering uh, how these two conceptions work together. You, on, the on, the, on one hand, knowing or thinking that you know what's happening, and yet keeping your eyes open I mean, what if something happens, for example, that doesn't fit into this, what you were saying before? How do you shape your films uh, then? Do you yeah. give more emphasis on let's be truthful to what's happening or let's make a pamphlet? Uh, yeah, yeah. In a, in a positive sense of yeah, the word. Yeah. <coughs> uh, um, so this film is different than the other one because for the other one, uh, for example, uh, about uh, immigration, I stay on the place, for example, in Calais, three years, you know, and I work very, it's a work of emissions. In Madrid, it was di very different because the, 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 the time for shooting was very brief. We are very brief. I stay not a long time on the place. Uh, for many reasons, at the beginning, I didn't, ha I didn't have the, 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 the intention to make a film. I wanted to be, to be on the place and try to start to make pictures, but for me, and at least uh, I thought that I had... Uh, perhaps enough material to try to make some things. But uh, I stay uh, two weeks in 2011, but not, I, I, I didn't follow all the process. Uh, it was one week, ten years, uh, ten days uh, after the beginning, after I come back in France, and I said, uh, I have to, 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 <laughs> to go back in Spain because it's very important and special, so I go back one week more, and after 2012, I go back for the holidays, three days, in July, two days, and in September, two days. So the, sh the time of shooting is very brief. It's why I, uh, after when I took the decision to try to make a f to give a form and make a, a film, I choose the form of the newsreel. You know. Um, so, but in the same time, for this film or the other one, uh, I think that the process, uh, the intention, or my way to try to uh, understand the things in the in the same way, to say the same thing. Uh, in one point, I tried. I would like to understand. Of course, deeply, I share some things with them, but not at all. And uh, before I was on the place, I I didn't know them. I didn't know what really uh, happened. I I had a theoretical idea about that, and theori theoretically, I was agree. But so when I go on the place, uh, I try to understand what happened. So I make a work, it's a kind of knowledge, you know, it's why this film, even if I <coughs> share some things with them, is not a propaganda film or something like that. So I try to understand and, in a certain sense, to produce some knowledge about uh, the event. And in the same time, when you produce some knowledge, you destroy uh, some representation that the media or filmmaker or some other people can make uh, about uh, the event. Uh, for Madrid, for example, it was very clear. You have a lot of disinformation inside Spain, but, uh, but of course in, inside Spain, but are so outside. Inside, the, the government and the media said, yeah, it's uh, flow. I think in, in Spain, the, the, wor the, the word is floteras. Floteras is the, the people with the dogs, you know, uh, that you, punk à chien in French, you know, the punk with dogs, uh, something like that. Uh, or they say it's bobo, you know, they, they destroy the, the representation of the people on the place, you know. And in France, it was in France and in Europe, it was more or less the same things. You know, it's the bobo. So you have a lot of disinformation. Uh, so it's it's why I try to uh, to understand what's happened, and in the same time, I destroy the representation. And the form uh, take the uh, the form of the newsreel. You know, so uh, the report is a counter report about the report and the representation that a lot of media ga gave uh, to the event. Um, and in the same time, of course, uh, it's what you said at the beginning. Of course, I uh, I have the challenge in the center, in certain sense, or I say that because perhaps uh, more uh, frontally clearly, I take I want to take position. I want in the same time to produce some knowledge and destroy some representation, and in the same time, I take position for uh, 
uh, the event that I try to understand, something like that. It's why I can say that uh, I share uh, deeply the, this process, you know. But in the same time, I don't want to make a propaganda film, you know. It's, uh, uh, yeah, it's a thing that I try to, to build. But you say something very interesting yeah. about the cynical. Uh, yeah, not the in your relation to your film. I was saying that usually the reactions to this kind of protest were, in the prevailing media, were cynical. And what is really special about your films is that they are completely devoid of any kind of cynicism. I mean, when you observe these protests, it's... Um, I mean, to go back a little bit to what you were saying now, you were saying that you want to get to know, that you want to understand. I would say that you want to do something even more. You want to become part. Because when one watches your films, one gets an impression that you're not only satisfied with knowing, you know, this film, the film which we will see tomorrow, they are made from the perspective of somebody who is not below or above the subject matter or observing it from the side, pretending he's a fly on the wall. You are part of this. And that's something which I think is very important. And this is why also your films cannot be cynical because, um, you know, it's difficult to be cynical towards uh, oneself. I mean, yeah, it can be, but... Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I say that. Uh, yeah, you're right. I, uh, yeah, deeply, I share some position, you know, about uh, uh, that they try to, you know, the, the question. That I think it's, it's, uh, uh, but I, th I think it's not really revolutionary, you know, <laughs> something who have someone who have a, a little bit an ethical, you know, and the sense of injustice, you know, can accept like that the the system of the political part right now, the crisis of the representation, uh, the ideology of the ultraliberalism, you know. Uh, uh, but, uh, so for that, I, of course, I'm, uh, uh, and I take part because I don't want to make, I don't believe in the film who try to see different point of view from the right to the left or something like that. For me, it's demagogy, you know, you can, you can work about and make a focus about one point of view and in the same time, uh, try to understand what it, uh, what's happened, what uh, idea or vision of the world is developed, and it's not because you are interested by that that you are you make a, a pedagogy, a, uh, a propaganda film or something like that. Uh, yeah, take part. But I think it's very something is very interesting about the event in Madrid, but also what uh, you said when uh, we prepared the meeting about the event in Slovenia. Uh, you told you told me about you, you spoke to me about some a kind of cynicism, but it's not the cynicism about it's, it's a kind of cynicism about uh, this kind of process, process of people who try to uh, uh, to make a radical criti 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 uh, critique about uh, the system and the other the main ideology right now in the world, and it's true uh, that this kind of cynicism you can uh, I can felt. Uh, him hit uh, when I screamed this film because, for example, when this film came in, uh, this film uh, was in a lot of festivals in the world, you know, even if if, if it's uh, not really finished. And some people who are, for example, in the world of cinema or uh, uh, who don't know the, what is the crisis, don't understand this kind of film. They say, oh, it's always uh, one point of view, only one note of the music. Uh, and there are a lot of, uh, they are very disturbing by, uh, by the form and also by the content of the, of the, of the film. Uh, for example, the reception of the film was very uh, strong by some people from Cuba, Mexico, the student in Mexico, people from South, South Latina, in Italy, in Spain. You know, some people who know uh, what is the crisis, uh, who know uh, what is the struggle, you know, something like that. But for some people from the north of uh, Europe, of uh, Anglo-Saxon, like that, uh, it's really, really, really more difficult. And you can really uh, understand and see clearly the, the, the sharing of the world like that, between the... Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. Um, are there maybe some questions from um, the audience? Not at the moment. Or a reaction. Or, or a reaction. A comment? Not yet. You mentioned before uh, several times a word newsreel, which uh, when I first heard about uh, this, you categorizing your film as a newsreel, um, I was a bit surprised. Uh, I saw it as some sort of an act of modesty. 
it's like you're not coming here in front of us and saying that you made this big political gesture or that you made this big artistic gesture. You modestly say that this is a newsreel in the tradition of, um, of, of um, the old newsreels, which were basically reports on the actual state of things. Um, but then again, I think that your film is much more complex than, than uh, what newsreel is supposed to be. For example, uh, what you are saying now, this um, remaining on one note, persisting to present only one point of view, or maybe that's also something that is uh, specific to a newsreel, which us usually presented um, uh, one point of view. But uh, my, po my question would be, could you talk a little bit about this idea of newsreel, of the past? Is it still possible today for us to have newsreels? Because we have also all these other media, television, internet, uh, YouTube. Um, is it just a romantic notion? Was it a modest idea, like like I suggested that it was? Yeah. What does uh, this word mean to you yeah. when you say newsreel? Uh, at the beginning, uh, I, I uh, as I said, you know, the, the, the time of shooting was very brief. Uh, so, uh, and in the same time, I, uh, it was my first time in Madrid. I was in Spain, but never in Madrid. So I, it was my first time in Madrid. Uh, I didn't know uh, someone in Madrid. I didn't speak Spanish, you know? So I don't understand the word in, <laughs> in Spain, and uh, I was alone. So uh, it was a little bit difficult, you know. So when you don't understand the language, it's uh, it's interesting because it's like a, an experience of uh, estrangement a little bit. So for uh, in one way, it's very interesting. You're very uh, concentrated. Uh, uh, it's interesting, but in the same, in another way, it's it's very difficult because you miss a lot of in of uh, information. You miss a lot of uh, information. You can make uh, some interpretation about uh, the event, and sometimes it's not true. You know, so you can play. It's interesting after for the work how, uh, when you have the translator and you make the, the you start the editing and <laughs> the translator translate all the things. You can understand how you can build an interpretation about some event and uh, how after is not true. Uh, it's very um, interesting for that, but it's not uh, easy. So when I start to to collect the to make the editing, I think about the form that I can give to the uh, to the material that I collect, you know. And of course, when I what uh, I shot, I shot wasn't was. Uh, uh, wasn't uh, exhaustive, you know. Sometimes it was with some big hole in the uh, between the event or something like that. And I didn't. Uh, it wasn't possible for me to make a very deep work as an immersion work like that. So I was a little bit frustrated, and I think perhaps uh, it's not it's not enough. It's like uh, sometime I had uh, a feeling as. Uh, I had made a report, you know, you stay on the place just some few days and after you go back. And I think, okay, uh, and after I, I, I talked about that and I said, okay, but it wasn't possible for me to stay more, so I did my best. And how can I do something with that now? Mm -hmm. And I think, okay, I will work about the idea of newsreel. Uh, so the newsreel, I don't know if you know that, now is, a, is really a cinematographic form, you know, is, a, is a category of aesthetic in a certain sense. It, the New Zealand was made uh, by uh, Robert Kramer. The, the word uh, came from Robert Kramer, the wonderful uh, filmmaker, American filmmaker, during the 70s. And the idea was to make some films about some subject, subject that the main media uh, uh, didn't uh, uh, take care, or uh, that the main media make some um, a lot of disinformation about some subject. For example, the Vietnam. So so it was uh, some short film, sometimes very brief, uh, with a lot of political content, but with this idea to try to create some pictures about some missing, uh, about some events, and to uh, respond about the missing pictures. You know. uh, in the same time, of course, you can. Uh, the newsreel is also uh, the kino. Uh, is the journal uh, in Italia, they make something like that in, during the 70s. Godard makes some things like that in the second part of his work with the Zigadartov group. The Medvekin group makes some cine track like that. <coughs> and now, uh, uh, and when I start to, so I, I think it was, a, I thought that it was a, 
interesting because you can work, when you work about the idea of newsreel, you work about uh, aesthetical category in the same time, with a past, with an history in, uh, in terms of cinema, <coughs> in terms of political content, but also in terms of cinema. And it was interesting to work about these ideas. And the, the third, the third uh, reason to work about the, the, the third reason who, uh, which uh, confirmed me in this idea is the disinformation about the event and the process in Spain and outside Spain. So I think it was uh, interesting. So I worked about this idea to make a, a newsreel, and I thought that perhaps it would be interesting to respond or to uh, spoke about this process, very experimental, you know, the, the process in Spain, uh, in a certain sense, is very experimental, by an experimental newsreel, you know, to try to experiment some things about a reactualization of the notion of newsreel. So I tried to, dis to do something like that. And with uh, some other uh, reading, po with uh, some uh, another political reading than the newsreel, uh, than the, the the concept used by some filmmakers during the the, the, the 70 in the 20th century, uh, uh, the the political approach and the concept are totally different. You know, for example, Godard <coughs> work with another idea of politics. It was. Uh, uh, to, to, to try to destroy the idea of idealism, you know, something like that. But now it's different, I think. It's caduc, this kind of uh, reading. Now we c you... Um, uh, I think that we can propose another reading and use some other concept about, uh, about, uh, uh, about that. So I try to do, to do something like that. If we stay on the subject of um, aesthetic categories a little bit more, mm. uh, there is an interesting dynamic at work in your films, all of them, also in this one. On one hand, you are making some very clear political statements, depicting some very interesting political situations. Your style is very precise, uh, prosaic in a certain way, clean. But on the other hand, all your films also have this poetic dimension that uh, you are not trying to avoid. And it is present in the way you structure your films, in these little bursts of abstract imagery, in little bits of music and sounds. And I find this combination of poetic and political very interesting and um, very unique. Uh, I remember when I saw this film for the first time and I was thinking about this, uh, this construct came to my mind. I thought, aha, you know, uh, this is something like protest poetry in the shape of a film. So um, I wonder if you also see yourself as some sort of a protest poet, or you dislike this uh, description like Bob Dylan did. <laughs> no, no, I don't dislike this. But I think uh, deeply, I think that uh, you know, each person, everybody uh, here, uh, has a political subject and also a poetical subject. You know, all the people in society, uh, when we are some people and we live in society, and we have a way to present uh, ourselves in front of uh, different people. So each people create his own aesthetic in a certain sense, you know. Uh, each people have uh, uh, the capacity to create his, in, uh, his aesthetic in a certain Some people choose this kind of clauses, make a tattoo or not, a, a piercing or not, you know, uh, have a way to, to express himself, you know. So deeply, uh, each people uh, uh, are uh, political and political. And so uh, I choose the cinema to uh, try to defend myself, you know, my, my, just my posture in the world, to try to understand who I am, what I would like to do, to define myself in relationship with, of course, uh, the world. It, for me, the cinema is really like that. It's a, it's a dialectic, uh, dialectical uh, tool who, uh, uh, which uh, permit me to, uh, to make this, uh, this work. And when you make this kind of work, you try to uh, escape from the zeitgeist, you know, uh, l'air du temps, <laughs> which cross uh, each other. Uh, I try to be... Uh, uh, in a certain sense, is more uh, more free, you know, and my film uh, is the expression of uh, all these kind of things. Uh, uh, I try to understand what happened. Sometimes I, I make a pictures about someone or a gesture, and I think it's a very strong. He have a, a very 
uh, it's politically and poetically very strong and it's necessary perhaps to make a, a big frame uh, a film is also uh, uh, a way to ex to um, work about the the feeling that you can uh, about your own feelings you know uh, uh, for example a, a French philosopher Georges Didier Barman work now right now about the dimension of pathos you know how the pathos uh, the feeling is very important uh, and not only um, it's not a miserabilistic thing miserabilistic thing but how the pathos is a part really uh, of the aesthetic and of course uh, the definition the etymology of aesthetic is aesthesis aesthesis in the is uh, means the sensation so you can really for uh, an artist uh, define more and more uh, your aesthetic with the dialogue between the cultural background and also with your own sensation you know and uh, it's the combination of the, the dialogue between the both who, um, which permit to uh, create something perhaps uh, singular and uh, and personal. I try to work about that. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have a question now? Ah, okay, we have to slowly stop. I had many one more question, th perhaps, <laughs> if we stop right now. No? Um, I had more questions for you, but there will be another talk tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So I think maybe it makes more sense that um, we listen to the advice of the young lady and uh, stop now. I would like to invite you again uh, tomorrow at half past one after the screening of the fragments there will be a discussion with Sylvain Georges uh, conducted by André Sprach. I think we opened a couple of very very interesting subjects now that André is a specialist in uh, Georges Didier Huberman. You also told me something very interesting today that in the new issue of Trafic Jacques Rancière is writing about this film which I find very interesting because usually we translated the book by Rancière to Slovenian and it was mostly about classics, so I'm really curious how Rancière applies to something very contemporary like this. But let's leave this, all, all these interesting subjects for uh, tomorrow. But of course, if somebody wants to talk to you, they can approach you and talk to you uh, in person uh, on the beach at the lighthouse tonight. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Silen, I'm sorry we were interrupted no, like no, this, but uh, we'll talk more uh, tomorrow on Monday. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for staying. Thank you very much.